X-rays. Um, one of the things uh, uh, is that we have to remember that we're talking about a macro, macroscopic scale, not microscopic scale. Uh, um, we heard in, in many of the talks that here, uh, in atomic phys physics, we're talking about angstroms, uh, and here we're talking about millimeter or, or couple hundred uh, uh, microns. Uh, a, because of that, CT yields anatomic information, basically structural information. Uh, on the other hand, SPEC basically measure uh, uh, activity distribution of uh, some tagged, uh, the molecules tagged by radioisotopes. Basically, you are, you are measuring the distribution of the uh, radioisotopes. Because those molecules can be designed to target specific physio physiological, pro physiological processes. So SPEC actually yields uh, functional information. Uh, Typically, the resolution in SPEC is, uh, is much poorer than uh, CT. Nowadays, CT uh, resolution in plane's uh, resolution can be millimeter, and whereas SPEC is uh, uh, half centimeter, something like that. But SPEC has, uh, has, uh, has some uh, um, advantages in terms of uh, you know, providing uh, functional information, sp uh, namely specificity uh, about the uh, uh, Signals. This is a typical scan, uh, a CT scanner, and uh, this 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 ring. Uh, within this ring, you have a uh, uh, array of detector on one side and uh, X-ray source at here. This is, I think, this is a single slice CT scanner, and you have table. And then you just uh, scan it. Now this, uh, uh, you have uh, multiple slices, and uh, for one scan, one rotation, a, 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 the fastest C scanner is about uh, 0.5 seconds. So really quick. The, new, the, the direction for CT scanner is going to be the cone beam. Namely, you have a large number of, basically, you have a planar detector. Right? Instead of an array of detector, you have plan, a plan detector and one source. So in that way, you can uh, measure the volume uh, of the subject in a much uh, rapid uh, uh, speed. But the problem is that uh, uh, it raises a lot of, I mean, challenges for the for the uh, reconstruction algorithm. This is a, a typical CD image of the abdominal region, and you can see you have you know different uh, uh, organs uh, has different attenuation coefficients. All right. All right. This is a, this slide shows uh, uh, the basic principle of. Uh, CT, how CT works. It's, it's very simple, actually. On one side of the you know, 2D object, we're talking about 2D CT now, uh, you have the source moving toward, I mean, in this way, up. And on, on the other side, you have a uh, uh, detector, and uh, you just measure it. This is the power of being, um, geometry. This is not a uh, geometry uh, used in the uh, Current uh, uh, in the modern scan, uh, CT scanner, modern CT scanner uses fan beam and cone beam, but it's, it, it can be used to illustrate the, the things we uh, we would like to talk about today. Um, that's the that's the configuration for the uh, they call it the first generation of CT. That's the that's the CT um, um, com configuration uh, comic used to uh, develop the reconstruction algorithm. Uh, because of that, he uh, received the Nobel Prize for uh, medicine. Um, so in CT, uh, you basically measure the transmitter intensity. This is a simplified model, and uh, you measure the uh, initial intensity, and uh, then you measure the uh, transmitter intensity. And uh, in, a, in a simplified model, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, um, it can be expressed this, you know, I can be expressed uh, by this equation. And uh, because you know both I and I sub zero, then you, you can uh, get this uh, uh, line integral of the attenuation distribution. And that's your data. And uh, this is a, uh, we call it Fenton, a simulated image. And uh, basically, in CT, you measure the line integral through the object at different orientations. And for example, at this orientation, you, you have a bunch of line integrals. Then you put, place them at, 
on, in this, uh, in this uh, uh, image, which we call data function, um, the reason we also call it sinogram. The reason we call it sinogram is that uh, one, of the, for example, if if you follow the loci of one of the points here, it gives you a, basically a, a sinusoidal uh, curve. So uh, one one observ observation we can make is that uh, you know, uh, basically it's the line integral. Uh, you know, the in, in the measurement is the line integral. So you know, the measurement at conjugate views should be the same. That's uh, what we see it here. Uh, the, measure, the value of the data out here should be the same. That's the kind of symmetry I'm talking about. Since I, since I, I, I see everybody's uh, showing a movie, so I, I decide to show a movie here. Uh, what I'm showing here is that uh, how you can get the, uh, oh, it's not showing there. I can see it here, but I cannot see the screen. But anyway, basically, this this slides show you how how uh, how you uh, get the image from the projections. And uh, as we uh, noticed there, um, uh, the measurement and the conjugate views are the same. So that's uh, that's the symmetry we're talking about. The implication of that is that it is the following. Uh, the measurement in the data space, the value of the data here is identical to, to the data at that point, and uh, therefore, if we you know we can exploit such uh, symmetry to reduce the scanning effort. For example, one way to do it is to uh, use half of the, half of the detector instead of use uh, you know uh, the full detector and scan from zero to two pi, or if we use the full detector, we we only need to scan from zero to uh, zero to pi. So that that has been done. Now we we uh, move to a spec uh, that is uh, slightly dif uh, quite different from CT actually. In spec, basically, what happens is that uh, um, you tag molecule. Use uh, by use of uh, uh, radioisotopes, the molecule is designed for uh, for you know for specific physiological process. So in, you inject or administer, or administer the the uh, molecule into the subject to follow the uh, physiological physiological process. And by looking at the distribution of those uh, isotopes, you know the distribution of those molecules. And here it's. Uh, you have this is a so-called three-hat spec. You have three sets of detectors, and uh, you have collimators and uh, uh, crystals here. I think this uh, PMTs, position-sensitive PMTs, and this is a, a, a real physical phantom uh, simulating the chest area. Yeah, this is a, this is a, tip, a typical clinical spec scanner. All right. Uh, The isotopes uh, that are typically used in spec are technetium 99M and uh, or, or indium uh, 111, etc. This guy has an uh, energy of 140 keV, or 149 actually. Uh, th th this, uh, I heard a, a very interesting story. Um, this isotope was, I mean, during 60s, uh, there, there are a lot of groups uh, trying to figure out which isotope probably is the best, most suitable isotope for. Uh, performing uh, spec imaging because you have to consider in the detec decaying time and uh, you know the um, how easy it, you know it can be uh, uh, tagged onto the molecules and actually the Chicago group found out this is probably is the uh, most appropriate uh, isotopes and uh, unfortunately they, they did not pattern it and uh, I heard that if they if they have done that they, they probably uh, can make a lot of money out of, the, uh, out of it. So what happened now is that uh, you, you know you can use spec to get a uh, image, and what I'm showing you here is the um, registered image images of the CT, you know, registered CT images and the spec images, the the color 
parts of the, uh, of the spec images, you can see that although the resolution of the spec is not great, but it's, uh, it's very specific. It can tell you whether the cancer is malignant or benign. It, it, it certainly it contains certainly a, a complementary information. All right, this slide show, uh, basically shows uh, the basic uh, the, the basic principle of spec. What happens is that you have an attenuator subject within which you have uh, uh, radioisotope distributions, and you measure it. Again, this is a simplified model. There are a lot of physical uh, factors you have to consider, like a scattering, like uh, um, like uh, yeah, detector response function, uh, like uh, noise, etc. Without considering those things, uh, let's write down the you know the the, the measurement uh, in this way. This is the density. Again, this is two D. Uh, we can do three D also. This is two D uh, distribution of the of the radioactive source. And this, when the gamma rays come, or X-rays come out of the uh, isotopes before reaching the detector, they will experience attenuations. And so therefore, you have an attenuate factor here. And this, uh, this makes uh, the reconstruction uh, what we would like to, to have is, uh, is to uh, reconstruct the distribution function A from the data, provide that we know mu. For example, mu can be estimated from uh, CT measurement. Anyway, this, uh, although the equation out here looks very similar to what we're seeing for CT, but it's, uh, it's quite complicated. It's, it's a very tough problem, actually. A lot of people working on this. Uh, um, for a long time, including a lot of uh, professional mathematicians. But anyway, it's still, uh, um, uh, it's almost solved, but uh, not completed yet. Um, if you do not compensate for the attenuation uh, effect and just do a reconstruction like you do uh, uh, in CT case, that's the image you will say. Uh, it's the qualitatively, uh, uh, distorted, and quantitatively, it's not accurate at all. So, so you have to uh, develop uh, something else to uh, to, uh, uh, to compensate it for the attenuation artifacts. Um, that's not what that's not what we're going to talk about today. What we're going to talk about is uh, is uh, is that whether we can uh, do something similar to what the we might do in CT, namely, for example, um, can we can we uh, uh, reconstruct the image accurately from spec data from from spec data acquired acquired over say a pi angular range? Um, because in in this case, you can clearly see that the data because of the attenuation factor. Here, uh, the data measured at the conjugated views are not the same. You don't have that symmetry anymore. So it is not clear whether you can, uh, uh, whether you can uh, uh, do that you can do in CT case, namely you, you, you only scan pi. Uh, one of the situations we looked at before is, uh, is, is to assume the attenuation uh, coefficients is uh, constant. In that case, this factor becomes uh, a simple exponential function, and uh, this may have this this uh, this case has some uh, uh, um, uh, cross, uh, practical correspondence. For example, uh, when you measure in the uh, brain, the distribution within the brain, without considering the skull, it's the brain tissue is pretty uniform, and uh, the the effect of skull can be removed because uh, because the distribution is uh, uh, is con convex uh, within the skull. Anyway, so we look at the symmetry of this guy first. And uh, of course, you don't have the a symmetry that you can see in CT in the data space directly. But if you look at the, uh, uh, then you take the 2D Fourier transform of this guy. Sorry. Right. 
and you, you, you see some symmetries. And actually, we, uh, we, uh, we exploit such symmetry for uh, controlling the noise in the image. Uh, that was done in 95. And recently, uh, it was, uh, uh, it was uh, found that uh, um, such, such a symmetry can also be exploited for reducing the scanning uh, effort uh, by, uh, by a group in Europe and by us. We freezed. <laughs> so, uh, all right. It's completely freezing here. <sighs> all right. I don't know. It's a freeze. All right. Reboot it. <laughs> what? Where is it? Control Alt Delete. No. Wait a minute. There we go. All right. Hopefully it works. Anyway, uh, for. Uh, so we, we, we were successful in terms of looking at the uh, you know, symmetry for uniform attenuation, but uh, for a non-uniform case, uh, it, it's not obvious. Um, there, there, was, uh, there was a work done by, uh, by Novikov in, uh, actually this year, published in Inverse Problem. That was a purely mathematical paper. He derived a symmetry condition like this. Uh, the re I, I, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not trying to, uh, uh, Trying to explain to you, you know, which term is, uh, is is what. What I'm trying to say is that this this uh, this uh, condition is very very complex. It's not very meaningful to me at all, actually. So complex that it's not very meaningful to me. One of the things we uh, uh, actually Emil observed during the you know process of struggling on this problem, Emil realized that, uh, you know, suppose this is the object and. Uh, if you look at the edge point, there's no attenuation at all. So the, the measurement uh, uh, from the conjugate views, you know, for this detector, th those two detectors, they are the same. So uh, this uh, give us a <laughs> give us a, a, a little bit of hope. And if you think about this, uh, this guy actually corresponding to one of the edge point in the data space. There, therefore, you know. What, what I mean is that the, the value at here is uh, the value of the function for that point. So, so therefore, you, 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 you can determine the value and the location of that, that point in the image space. From such information, you can calculate the uh, data function for that point. And then you subtract that point from the measurement. The residue uh, data function is the... Uh, data function for the remaining of the object. You keep doing this for the points on the out, uh, layers, and then you, 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 you peel off the, the layer of the object, and then you keep doing that, keep doing that. So this, is a, this, this leads to the, lead, this observation leads, uh, leads to the development of the so-called potato peeler, and which is available at Siki.com. Uh, <laughs> So uh, basically, uh, you just uh, reconstruct the uh, image uh, layer by layer from the outside toward inside. Um, 
after we, uh, uh, I think so after we submitted a paper, uh, we uh, we be we became aware that uh, uh, the potato peel co uh, concept is uh, similar to the layer stripping uh, technique uh, for uh, uh, estimating the surface potential in uh, impedance imaging, and to the uh, allen peeling. Uh, method for inverting the Abel transforms of a cylindrically uh, symmetric uh, objects in, uh, say, for example, uh, flame spectroscopy. But anyway, in terms of math, they are, they are entirely different. Now, we, you have the perspective. The, the problem is how, how do you formulate it? How, how do you, you know, uh, from a mathematical point of view, how do you really identify the symmetry? And uh, here, we are going to uh, borrow the, the concept uh, uh, developed for the, you know, for this, uh, for the uh, in the atomic physics, namely, we are going to uh, you borrow the phase uh, variable phase concept. Namely, the phase is not only the function of uh, energy, but also the the uh, spatial uh, coordinates. By doing so, you you know you you may uh, have, you, you may be able to see um, um, more detailed information about the system. All right. So what, how do you do that? What do we do is that basically you uh, you multiply the image, just pretend you have the image, and then you multiply the image by, a, uh, say, for example, a circular indicated function, and then you calculate the uh, sinogram. So this is the this is the per part you have seen in the in the data function, and you multiply that. Of course, you cannot get this guy except that the r equals r m. But it turns out that uh, you know you can derive the equation for for this uh, so-called variable sinogram, and uh, that equation is nonlinear. So you you want to simplify that, and uh, um, we uh, develop the so-called uh, Q variable. Oh, where where is the vari var uh, variable comes in? Um, you know if you th if you you know think because I find the coordinates in the data space as the energy, then R is the you know coordinates in the, in the real image space. Anyway, and uh, using such a Q variable, uh, you can see uh, uh, the symmetries, and uh, very clearly see the symmetries, and uh, and you can derive the equation for uh, the Q variable, and uh, it, it turns out it's a differential equation. Then you see that we we uh, we were able to uh, change the integral equation to a, a differential equation. Uh, we don't know how to solve this equation yet, but by studying the properties, the bounds of this equation, we were able to prove a few things. Namely, the, we, we were able to, you know, to pr prove how to, ex how, I mean, to, to uh, identify the way to uh, uh, exploit the uh, symmetry. Um, in addition, um, because of that because of that symmetry, you can you can combine those two uh, Q variables to get a, a family of uh, differential equations which corresponding to a different uh, scanning configurations. For example, half detector, short scan, and uh, remember that in CT case, this guy equals that guy, but uh, uh, in spec case, they're not the same. But as we will show in the next slides, for each of the uh, differential equations we derived, we can show that it's a unique and a stable solution. And uh, this paper is under revision. I think uh, it's virtually accepted, but uh, but needs some uh, uh, revision. Uh, we, uh, we're almost done with that. And uh, we have shown that using simulation, we have shown that before that uh, reduce, uh, reduced scanning configurations are possible anyway. For example, you see in spec it, it was uh, uh, generally considered that you need two pi scan. Actually, now you you know we prove that you only need pi in this way or that way, this way or or even pi scheme, namely as long as those uh, scanning segments or or you know uh, are sum sum to pi. Basically, previously people think you need the whole data. Now you only need half. Or in pi scheme, you need uh, those. Uh, the measurement in those segments. Now, to convince you, I show you a, a few images right here. Uh, this is a true image, and uh, those are the profiles go vertical and the horizontal uh, uh, directions through the images. 
And uh, if you use 90, obviously uh, the data is incomplete. We, you, we can prove it. And, but if you use the 180, you, you get a virtually identical image so here. And use 270, of course, you have redu redundant information. Uh, you should be able to reconstruct the image correctly. Uh, in uh, medical imaging, uh, one of the things people care about a lot uh, is noise. Uh, we also uh, tested the, the claims under the noisy condition, and uh, they work pretty well. To, uh, to close my talk, uh, I want to say that uh, you know, by borrowing some uh, some of the ideas um, developed in atomic physics, we will able to de uh, develop some of the uh, nice things to uh, explore some of the symmetries in imaging, uh, in medical imaging. Uh, this is a, this is a list of uh, potential applications of those things. We have done some of the things uh, here, except uh, that thing yet. So I would like to stop it here. Thanks. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Okay.